Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a game I've wanted to play for a long time. I got the privilege of picking it up at PAX South, South thanks to Zafty Games. That is Ginger Dead House, a grim tower defense board game. It was one of the first tower defense board games I had seen quite a while ago, and I was very intrigued by it. The game, uh, Ginger, Ginger Dead House, is pretty simple. You're going to have your own board. You're going to have a row, rows and columns, basically five and five I believe and you're going to be oh no it's four and five and you're going to be basically setting up defenses to protect your ginger dead house all the while you're going to have monsters coming in and attacking you now it's a very similar game to those like Starcraft and Warcraft those com competitive custom games in which you're trying to forcibly have monsters on your opponent's side go across the field and destroy them and vice versa it plays up to four players and you can also play cooperatively which just astounded me as far as that goes because I had played a lot of tower defense games at that time and so finally when I got the chance I was very very excited to see it and I got a chance to play it let me show you how to play it and then what I think about it so here we have the game ginger dead house and everything included along with I got a couple extra promo stuff I'm not gonna lie from the convention nevertheless uh, you're going to have a big box, you're going to have the rule book, you're going to have four player boards, as you can see they all look the same. They all come with uh, five of these column or five of these rows and four, uh, four of these columns here, from five all the way down to one, it kind of illustrates the point. Uh, this is going to be your side of the board, and over here is going to be the enemies, and they're going to come and attack you. Now the game plays kind of like a solo game, however it's not necessarily a solo game because you can do actions against your opponents, but not with these action cards, they're actually going to be from the player decks. You have a a big stack of monster cards that is going to come with the game and these are all different monsters as well as their power and their abilities you're going to have action cards which you're going to play at the beginning of your turn to see how many monsters you're going to have to deal with and any special actions on your turn along with the player deck cards which are a big stack of cards here and you're going to get these to start the game off uh, with defenses along with things you can play on your opponent's turns and a couple other nifty items as well so that is the main aspect of what you're going to be getting in the game these different boards uh, let's go ahead and take it to one board and show you how a singular uh to round is going to be played and how it kind of functions that's so you can see it easier so we have a singular player board, and this is going to be the way the game functions for everybody. Uh, normally in a two-player game, you're going to do head-to-head, -head, so one player here, one here. Uh, in a four-player game, you could do any number of ways you want to do it. Along with a co-op, they're going to be next to each other, and you can actually utilize either player's board with the cards you have to kind of defend against uh, all the hordes coming from either side. But here's how a basic turn works. So there is going to be five different aspects of the game, but before that, we do a setup, and the setup is pretty simple. You're going to take the uh, player deck, and you're going to draw cards from it until you get three defensive cards and then you're going to remove the rest and put them in the deck and you're going to then shuffle the deck up so that way that it's randomized and you have three defenses to use. You can put these defenses down anywhere on the board that you would so choose. Remembering that, of course, if any monsters get past this one area as they come down the board, the game is over. Each of these character, uh, these different defenses have a defense value. This is eight, four, and one. Eight is obviously the strongest. However, this one here says it instantly destroys uh, giants in the same column. So whenever monsters come down here that they're giants, they instantly get destroyed when they touch this guy. So contact is how it works. Otherwise though, there are certain abilities like this gummy grunt. It says he can deal directly four damage to any monster in the same row during the player phase once per turn. Some of them of course are also once per game. After that, you're going to make sure everybody gets five cards. So everybody's gonna get these three to start with. And then of course, five cards for their hand. Uh, and then you're going to move on to the action phase of the game. Actions are not good. They're actually dangerous. When you flip over an action card like a star s'mores you're going to then pick the number of monsters based on the symbol of with a fist on it so that has says five monsters and sometimes they're going to actually have actions that are going to come with other things like this one says three but if darth malt is on the board flip an additional three monsters so that can be three or six so we're going to start with this one here we're going to then take five monsters and based on the monsters a uh, little yellow symbol here is where you're going to place it on the board as you can see here it's on the second one so it'd be one and then two and it would place here then the next monster would come for five that's that's now four and now it's, uh, three monsters left uh, this is going to push this one over push it down so whenever a new one spawns you push the other ones down okay that's three you need two more monsters so this one goes right here and finally our last one which pushes this monster down whenever monsters arrive into a lane they push all the monsters in the lane so if another one arrived here they push these guys down here as well also this is the defense of your uh, towers and these are the attack of the monsters uh, if in the case they are 
tied, they're both going to be destroyed. And if in the case either are po more powerful than the others, then of course the monsters uh, or the towers are going to be destroyed based on whoever has the highest power and or defense. After we go past the, the monster phase, it's not the player phase, and the player is going to be able to place down their defenses along with any of their uh, player abilities. Some of them are actually going to be traps that are going to be used on your opponent's turn, which you would only be able to use based on whether the action said so or not. And the other times it'll say stuff like, you can steal a defense from an opponent's row and you can place it immediately in uh, an unoccupied space in your row five, which would be up here. Um, and if you can't, it's destroyed. Uh, then of course you have these defenses here that you can go ahead and play anywhere on the board that you'd like. And remember you're gonna start with five cards, but every turn you're gonna get five more cards, you're gonna get your hand size back to five again. So you can choose which ones you wanna play and which ones you don't. Uh, this one obviously will do four damage every round, but this is a five so it won't be affected. This one here says it's a flaming marshmallow catapult may, may deal five, uh, eight direct damage to any one monster or defense on the field during the uh, player phase and only once. Uh, so if he wanted to, he could simply pop this guy. He's not going to. He's going to save that, though, because that can be useful for later. Uh, this one here will destroy any giants that hit him, but that's a witch and a dragon. Uh, and, of course, we got to read these guys here. This one says, when in combat, fairy uh, fairies swap their power with the power of the blocking defense after all modifiers have been applied. So in this case, it would swap this five with a four. And, in fact, this guy would actually win if this actually hit that, which is pretty cool. This one says that all of the monsters on your on, on your field are power plus two. So, in fact, in fact that would this would actually change from a 7 to a 4 and this would actually win as well still but everything else would be more powerful this would be a 12 this would be an 8 and this would be a 4 uh, this is when, when the dragon enters uh, the game destroy all other monsters and defenses in the same column so in fact this is actually just going to get instantly destroyed before even playing these extra cards so obviously remember to read all the different abilities as they come and hit the board uh, when death's messenger destroys a defense flip an additional monster it then enters the game on your side of field immediately. Okay, whenever this is destroyed, destroy a defense in the same row. If the destroyed, if destroyed in combat, this is is the defense's row. Okay, so that's the basic idea, right? After you've gone ahead and played all of your cards and made sure beforehand to read all the different monster abilities, then you're going to go on to the movement step in which monsters are all going to move down from left to right, top to bottom in a in a, in order like that. So that's one, that's two. This is going to bump into this one, and it's going to die. And this is when it destroys a defense, flip an additional monster, but it doesn't destroy one, so it just instantly goes. This one will move, uh, uh, this one will move down two, and then this one will move down. And after that, uh, that will be the end of this phase. You're going to go ahead and clean up anything that you have played that you don't need anymore, like the action cards or any of the specific abilities you've used. And then you're going to draw back up to five cards, and it'll be the other player's turn. The game's going to continue like that, with these monsters pushing down as much as they can, and with your defenses trying to hold strong as best as they can. Of course, there's player action cards that are going to stop your defenses or hurt your opponent's defenses, but the idea is to survive and be the last person left standing in either the co-op or the basic variant of the game. Game. That's the basic idea of how to play the game Ginger Dead House. Let's talk about it. So let's talk about little caveats too, and along with other things that can happen in the game. Obviously, you saw some of these Star S'mores uh, different cards, and that, like that, those are all those are kind of uh, the promo cards. But they have different things, like the Big Bad Wolf, and they, these cards monsters can work with each other, as well as helping or hurting the different players. In some occasions, you've got the White Snake. If it enters combat, the White Snake and the blocking defense are both destroyed, and it's a zero. Oh, uh, there's just tons of different things in here: the Devil with the Three Hairs, the Executioner, the Giant, the Seven Ravens, the Singing Bones, Queen Bee, Ogre. Uh, just it's just a lot, right? And you also have the player decks. And of course, there's two types. There's the defensive cards, and then there's your offensive cards that you play that will affect certain things in various ways. Like, for instance, this one here has like a stab in the back symbol, which is kind of funny. Choose an opponent that opponent may not play defenses from their hand on the next turn. The target opponent may still steal defenses normally. Place this card next to their field to show it until the end of their turn. Wow, that is mean. Raisin Rooftop Revenge. You can steal a defense in your opponent's row one. You must immediately place that defense in an unoccupied tile in row five. If you can't, it's destroyed. Uh, candy is dandy. Destroy a defense of your choice on any field. So all these are, a lot of these are just take that cards. They're mean backstabby cards. Little Red Riding Hood. I'm guessing she destroys big bad wolves. She does. <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So that's how the player cards work. And of course, then you have the actions and they are all kinds of good and all kinds of bad. Uh, YOLO. If you flip this action on your first turn, shuffle it back into your action deck and flip the next action from the, the, the action deck instead. Uh, poison Apple. Choose an opponent. That opponent may destroy any one defense of their choosing from the field. It's low, but it also makes you lose... Uh, Oh, but and it's low and it also hurts your opponent. Wow, that's like actually a good action. But normally they're just going to put monsters in your field. So what do I have to say about this game? Well, it's random. It's random. 
Like, there is strategy behind it, don't get me wrong, but what hits the field can be devastating or it can be amazingly good for you. The cards you get can be either really good or not the best cards you want. Sometimes you'll get these really awesome combos. There's just all this craziness. Well, does that make the game bad? I had to think about it because when I was playing the game, I was winning and then I was losing and then we were tied and it kind of had this back and forth feeling throughout the entire game, which I really, really enjoyed. I liked the randomness to this game, in fact. I don't know why I did, but because I guess you're never too far from winning, but you're always really close to losing at the same time. And there's just this appeasement with playing against the different the different gummy bears and all this other kind of stuff, the dragons. I really enjoyed that kind of, that kind of like alternate fairy tale type theme. And I like the fact that I think I've got everything under control and I've got this beautiful board that's all lined up and ready to go. And then all of a sudden it's my turn and now everything has been decimated. All the things I thought I was going to do, now I can't do because this dragon hit the field and this player did this thing. It has this craziness aspect to it. So I liked it. I actually am very, I, was, I had a lot of hype for this game, and I think I was rewarded pretty well with it. Uh, but I can see a lot of people not liking it as well. Because some people who want a really good strategy game that involves like where you're going to place things and how you want it to all function and how you want it all to work out are probably going to be a very upset with all the take that aspects hit this game. There's a lot of meanness attached to this game when you're playing with multiple players, uh, especially in the 1v1 mode where you're going back and forth with each other. But if you like zany, crazy, uh, funny good time, you're going to enjoy Ginger Dead House. It also has... I mean, the artwork's not... It's, it's more cartoony, but it has like a devilish type of cartoony feeling. I really like the artwork to this game. Overall, it's, it's very, very fun, but it's going to have its very niche audience, I think, unfortunately. Um, I will definitely be playing this game again. I hope to be playing it on a live play it sometime soon. Ginger Dead House, if you're interested, check it out down below in the description.